Well, praise the Lord. It's me. You know who? Pastor Don. And welcome to tonight's Bible study. And I will be teaching, preaching, and technically directing tonight's service. I hope you brought your Bible with you. Um, your note-taking device. And you're ready to hear the word of God. Hallelujah. Let me go ahead and... Um, Lower the music. Thank you, Brother Todd, for bringing us to victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I think you just sang about it. Jesus brought us to victory. Jesus and the Father. Anyway, we're going to actually talk a little bit about that tonight. Um, if you have your Bibles handy with, with you, um, go ahead and open them with me, please, to... Um, well, let me look at my notes. When in doubt, look at your notes. Go to uh, Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Hallelujah. I trust everything's all as well with everybody who's joining us tonight. Everybody joining us in Zoom. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming. All the Facebook Live people, thank you for joining us too. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, um, you know, Sunday was um, Palm Sunday, and this whole week is what we call in the church Holy Week where we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. And tonight and on Sunday, we're going to wrap it up, you know, contingent upon the, upon the Holy Ghost giving us the, the, the green light to do it. Um, we're going to be talking about resurrection life. Resurrection life. Um, something happened to Jesus on the cross of Calvary and something happened to you. Something happened when he was crucified to Jesus and something happened to you. Something happened when he was buried and something happened to you. Something really happened when he was raised from the dead to Jesus and something really, really, really happened to you. And something is now currently happening now that he's seated at the right hand of the father to Jesus and something is currently happening to you. So I was crucified with Christ and you were crucified with Christ talking to believers. Now when he was raised, you were raised. And now that he's seated at the right hand of the father, guess what? We're going to talk about that. We're going to probably focus more on that on Sunday, but go with me, please. Galatians chapter two, and Brother Brent, I see that you said you're having um, issues logging into um, Zoom. If you go to our website, there is a password there. If it's asking for the password, I put the link, to the, the, the direct link to our Bible study. Password's not being accepted. Okay, did you hear me? I just heard you now. I got him. I'll take care of it. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. We got real-time tech support in the kingdom of God. Thank God for Pastor Michelle. All right, um, Galatians chapter 2, look at verse 20. And this is Apostle Paul speaking. And he says, I am crucified with Christ. This is how he saw himself. And if you want to live the resurrection life now, today, this is how you have to have the, an active revelation of how you see yourself. I am currently, present tense, crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. So Paul recognized something happened to me on the cross of Calvary. He saw something that happened not only to Jesus, but it happened to him personally. Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. I'm not the person I used to be. Something happened. When he died, something to me died. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. John 3, 16 says, God so loved, he gave his son. Hallelujah. God so loved, he gave Jesus. He was sacrificed. Hallelujah. On your behalf. So something happened to Jesus, and Paul saw that. But something he also recognized, something happened to him. 
he recognized that he was crucified with Christ. He was raised with him. Oh, Lord have mercy. And he is currently seated together with them in heavenly places. So I have like people texting me and messaging me all over. So it's, it's interesting. Hallelujah. But I have grace to do this. Stretch your hands towards the screen and say, he has grace. Pastor has grace. Amen. All right. Go to Ephesians chapter one. We're going to spend most of our time tonight in Ephesians chapter one. Ephesians chapter one. Don't text pastor while he's preaching. Praise the Lord. All right. Ephesians chapter one. Look at verse 15. Now, the Apostle Paul is preaching, or rather, yeah, preaching, and he's praying for the church. So if you read Paul's letters, which, what you'll notice is that he'll be teaching, and then he'll go off into prayer, and then he'll come back to teach some more, and then he'll go back off into prayer, and then he might teach some more, then go off. I mean, he'll just, you just notice that. So he's teaching, 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 starting with chapter 1. Then he goes over, he goes over into the spirit. He starts praying for the church at Ephesus, but he's praying for us. He's praying for you. He's praying for me tonight here in Fremont, California, that we would recognize what happened, that we would see what happened, not only to Jesus on the cross, but what happened to you. And not only that we would recognize that, but we would be able, we would be in, empowered by the recognition through that revelation to live in the reality of that. It's wonderful. It's beautiful to say, you know, I'm saved and I'm sanctified and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to heaven with a mighty burning fire. That's a beautiful thing. It's a good confession. Don't let anything or anybody take it from you. But it's better still, hallelujah, it's better still not only to say it or talk about it and believe it, but to live in it, to have it. And better yet, be a channel through which that could flow to somebody else. Glory to God. All right. Ephesians chapter one. Look at verse 15. He says, wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, that's how we know we love you. That's what the apostle John said. And first John, how do we know that you pass from death to life? You love the brethren. If you can get along with people in the church, we know you saved. Can I get a witness? I see one, two. All right. Praise the Lord. Look at verse 16. And cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Plural. Sounds like he prayed for him more than once. Praise the Lord. Look at verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. Now he's going to start. He's praying. Now he's getting ready to start praying. He's fixing to start praying. Now you ready? That the God of my Lord Jesus, the anointed one, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. And so when I first got born again, quote unquote, saved, my my little goal was well, my little goal was to read a chapter a day in the Bible. So I would read at least one chapter. In the Bible, and I remember the first Bible I got was from a used bookstore, and I think it was one of those Gideon Bibles that somebody had stole and then. The used bookstore bought it for a penny and then I bought it for five dollars. But anyway, um. I have that Bible somewhere and I like circled and highlighted every just about every word in the Bible because I'm just reading, I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading. So I'm getting a lot of um, quality. I'm feeding on the word of God. I'm building myself up, but I'm not I'm not getting a lot of revelation. I'm not getting a lot of insight. I'm not getting a lot of understanding. And I don't I can't recall exactly where I was, but I remember specifically where the Lord stopped me. On Ephesians chapter one, verses, where are we at? Yeah. 15 through 23. And then Ephesians chapter three, verses 10 to the end of Ephesians chapter three. And it was just read these two passages of scripture. And I read these two passages of scripture every day for weeks and the weeks turned into months and months. It's all I did was read it over and over and over and over and over and we, we know from Proverbs chapter four that when the word gets into your eyes and your ears and in your mouth, it'll eventually get into your heart. And once the word gets into your heart, what's going to happen? Faith comes. Faith for what? Well, now, particularly, specifically, we're talking about faith for revelation knowledge, faith for wisdom, faith to see and understand what happened to Jesus 
what happened to Paul, what happened to the apostles, and what happened to you on the cross. Revelation, insight, comprehension. Praise God. All right. What do you pray? Verse 17, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus, the anointed one, the father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, the word there, wisdom, in the Greek, it means Sophia. That's how you pronounce it. That's not how you pronounce it. I don't know how you pronounce it. I'm just reading it from my iPad. But it's Sophia, which in the Greek means skill in the affairs of life, practical wisdom, wise management. I love this part. Wise management as shown in forming the best plans and selecting the best means, including the ideal of sound judgment and good sense. Sound judgment, oh hallelujah, and good sense. So he's praying that they would have some good sense. Shamash, oh praise the Lord. And that he was praying that the God, the God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, would give unto them the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The word revelation means disclosure, unveiling, something that was covered, something that was veiled. Something that was hidden is suddenly revealed to the senses. And in this specific case, the context is revealed by the Holy Spirit. Something that you didn't see suddenly, miraculously, now you see. So he's praying for wisdom, skill, and hallelujah, and revelation. You need both. Now, you know, and I'm not talking about anybody here because we're wonderful, we're perfect, we're mighty, we're holy, we're holy. You know, praise the Lord. But, you know, there's some interesting people that go to church. So let me just put it that way. Oh, hallelujah. praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And anyway, they, a little bit of wisdom would help along with their alleged revelation. So it, see, the wisdom and the revelation balance each other out. If you don't have good sense and you have alleged revelation, you're going to find yourself tilting this way. And if all you have is sense and um, intellectual capacity, but you have no revelation of the word, you're going to lean over that way. All the people, you know, looking at the video. But if you have wisdom, skill, wise management, good sense and revelation, knowledge and insight, man, you right there smack dab in the middle of the road where you need to be. That's the best place. Hallelujah. All right. That the God of our Lord Jesus, the anointed one, the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in, in the knowledge of him. The word there knowledge is a full is epignosis, which means full and accurate knowledge of God, the father, full and accurate knowledge. There's another word translated for knowledge, gnosis, which means and I'm kind of pressing them together which means knowledge gained by experience, felt, interactions. But this knowledge is full and accurate knowledge of God himself. Again, revelation knowledge, knowledge that is true. Praise God about the father himself. All right, go to Ephesians chapter one, verse 18. It says, so he's praying, he's praying that they would get wisdom and understanding, revelation knowledge, Insight of the father himself and what's going to happen after that go to Ephesians 1 verse 18 it says that the eyes of your understanding Being enlightened Another translation says flooded with light So right now you can't see I got a big light over here and I got a little light over there and If I turn these lights off, we'd be sitting in the dark We would not be able to see pastor Don in all of his tutorials Anyway, maybe I should turn the lights off. Um, it's, it's easy to see when there's light. Praise God. That the eyes of your understanding being flooded, I mean flooded, enlightened, that you may know. The word there, know, means to see. And depending on the, the, the tense that it's used in, can mean see or understand. 
the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. So once your eyes of your understanding, the eyes of your heart, your spirit is enlightened. Now you're going to be able to see some things. Previously, you were in the dark. You didn't even recognize. You couldn't even see. You didn't even know certain things were possible. Certain things were real. But now you can see. Praise the Lord. Now you can see. Once the eyes of your understanding have been flooded with light, now you can see. See what? What is the hope of his calling? The word there, hope, means expectation. Heartfelt expectation of good and the desire to receive it. You're expecting it and you desire it. Praise God. What is the hope of his calling? Okay, so what is this about? What are we, why, what, why are we, why are you sitting at your house? Let's keep it, let's keep it real. Can't leave them, well in the Bay Area, we can't leave the house. We got all, all of us on the couch in a Ziploc baggie for the next month or so, the rest of this month at least. They're handing out tickets if you leave the house. You got to have a piece of paper saying that you're important and necessary to leave the house. Unless you go into the grocery store or to Chick-fil-A. You have to prove. Praise God. I mean, why are you here? I mean, what? I mean, I wasn't raised in church. I, I never, I didn't know anybody when I was growing up that went to church. Um, I wouldn't go to church if God wasn't there. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I know you're wonderful, but if God wasn't in it, I'd be at the house watching football on Sunday. I'm here because God is here. And he said, you be here. And I'm with him, so I'm here with him and you. Hopefully. Praise God. So what is this? What's where are we going? What is this about? There has to be more than just standing in line at Costco trying to get some paper and some, I mean, some water and some toilet paper. It has to be more to life than waiting on your Trump check to come. All right. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. His inheritance in the saints. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And it says in verse 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, For the God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Anybody remember that from Genesis chapter, chapter 1 when God said, let there be light? So that same God, that same person, divine person. For the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness have shine in our hearts. So he's talking about you and me. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus, the anointed one. Verse 7 says, for we have this treasure. Hmm. So treasure is something valuable, right? We have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Verse 8 says, for... For we are troubled on every side, yet distressed not. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Verse 9 says, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Verse 10 says, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest or revealed in our bodies. What is his inheritance? And what's, what's, what is his great thing of value that's in us? It's God's presence. I mean, what? No, you're not. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. God's presence, God's light, God's glory. Is on the inside of you. The same God that said, let there be light. And there was light is on the inside of you. Lord have mercy. Selah. Think about that. Take a deep. Think about that. Praise God. All right. 
Look at verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us? Oh, I'm in the wrong place. Where am I at? Oh, man, where am I at? Not destroy it. Always, verse 10 says, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. And then we go back to Ephesians chapter 1. I'm sorry. Ephesians chapter 1. Look at verse 19. So in verse 18, he was talking about the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know, that you may see and understand what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, what is that great, valuable entity on the inside of you, what's that power on the inside of you. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19, it cont continues on, he says, and what is the exceeding is great, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward, to usward, to usward. Who believe. Not who go to church. Not who try to be good people. Nothing wrong with trying to be good. But who believe. That power. What is. Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 19. What is. Or this is. How. So he's praying that you would see. Eyes of your understanding flooded with light, right? Spirit of wisdom and understanding. So you could see. So you can know what power is available to a believer. A believing believer. An actual believer. No disrespect. All right. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? So this is the power. Lord have mercy. This is the power available to the believer. This power is available when you go to Kmart. I went over to Target. The other day, well, yesterday, and they had them lined up to go into Target. I drove past Costco, and they had them lined up to get into Costco. Went over the Starbucks; they were lined up to get into Starbucks, and all, everything else was closed. And that power was still on the inside of me, waiting, waiting, in full potential, waiting for what? For some faith. That, this power is available to the believer. The power is available. It may be lying dormant. It may be inactive. You may not know how to tap into it. But Paul is, Paul is praying that we would see and understand. All right, back to Ephesians 1 verse 19 says, and what is, let me turn my audio down. Look like I'm, I'm, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? Okay, this, this is how much power available to you, the believer. Well, it's according to the working of his mighty power. It's according to the working of his mighty power. It's according to the working. The word there, work, working, is where we get our English word energy. 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 So this lamp is working. I don't know if you can tell. I just turned it off. It's not working. It's connected to the power, but I turned it off. But now I turn it back on. Can you? It's probably a little slight difference, but. All right, praise the Lord. Having fun. Pastor's having fun. So what I did was I flipped the switch and turned the power on. Faith is how we access the power that's already in us. You don't need to go up here and go down there and over there. And the power is on the inside of you Wait, right now. And faith. In God, the person, him, the person, and his word. Because if I don't know you, should I trust you? Not unless you're stupid. If you know somebody that they're faithful to do what they say they're going to do, you don't have any problem trusting them. Now add on top of that, or even before that, they love you. Sacri that they would sacrifice themselves for you. And you know they're faithful. Then it's easy to believe. 
that person. Hallelujah. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? Well, it's according to the power. Hallelujah. It's according to the power which he wrought or which he released when he raised Jesus from the dead. It's according to the power which he wrought or which he released when he raised Jesus from the dead. I don't think you heard me. It's a court, the measure of the power available to the believer. Okay, let's go over to um, Ephesians because I talked about it in the beginning. Ephesians chapter 3. So in Ephesians 1, the prayer in Ephesians 1 is, is Paul is praying that we would get revelation, knowledge, and insight into what happened to us on the cross. And what that event on the cross, what it has made available to the believer then over in Ephesians chapter 3, it talks about, let me see, Ephesians chapter 3. Look at verse 16. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16 says that he would, he would grant you, talking about God the Father, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his power in the inner man or in your spirit, that Christ, that the anointed one, may dwell in your hearts by faith. There's, there's that faith stuff again. That ye being rooted and grounded in love, faith works is made active by love that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth of length and depth to know here the, the word here no means to know by experience the love of God experientially which passive mere knowledge and that you might be filled oh hallelujah with all the fullness of God so you have the capacity to receive him all of him if you want to know what that looks like, look at the life of Jesus. Read the Gospels. That's a man operating at his full spiritual capacity. Jesus was God manifested in the flesh, but he operated as a man anointed of the Holy Ghost. God expressed himself through me. Jesus said in John, hallelujah, chapter 14, it's the Father that's doing the work. He's working through me. He's expressing himself through me. He's operating through me. Hallelujah. So you see God operating in a man at full capacity in the life of Jesus. And the word just says here, we have the capacity to receive all the fullness of God. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. Look at verse 20. It gets even better. It gets even deeper. Right, Brother Reggie? Say hallelujah. All right. Uh, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that's actively at work in us. Now I want to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above. Literally in the Greek, beyond all measure. Beyond all limits. Literally, beyond all measure, beyond all limits. Now I want to him who is able. That's the one that's in you. Now I want to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask. The word there, ask, could also be translated as pray or think or consider. There's something God can't get you to consider because you have a self-imposed limitation. Your faith will hit this man-made, self-made limit and you can't see and you can't ask past this, this limit, this barrier. And so God needs to increase your spiritual capacity. He needs you to renew your mind. He needs to have the word and the spirit break down those barriers, those concepts, the self-doubt, the limitations that you impose on yourself when the word has no limit, when God's power has no limit. Your only limitation is the will of God. What did God say? What does the word say? Hallelujah. Now with the hymn who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think. And I've told this before and many, many, many times. I'm going to say it again because I just feel led to say it. But when the building that we're currently locked out of, that wasn't the first building we're supposed to be in. God had another one. He had a bigger one, three or four times bigger. Thank you, David. Three or four times bigger. Hallelujah. But I couldn't ask for it and I couldn't think it. He showed it to me. Later, when we moved into the place that we're currently locked out of in San Francisco, hallelujah, but, we, the, but the building is not the church. We're the church. 
So because the building is closed, don't mean the church is not closed. Hallelujah. All right, praise God. Anyway, so um, now to him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power of the work of in us. So he 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 showed me he, he I got in to see the building. That he 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 spoke to my heart. I have something better for you. Then he showed it to me. Then I went on the inside and I looked like. I'm looking at Michelle. I even took pictures of it on the inside. I got them on my phone somewhere. And it's like, wow. And then we walked out. I never thought about it. Didn't pray about it. Why? Because I can't ask for it. I can't think it. Because I got this, this thing right here. First of all, it had room for hundreds of people. That don't make no sense, right? Right? Now I want to him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think. Why are we going to get a building that can seat hundreds of people? We don't have hundreds of people. That don't make no sense. Man, it costs all this money. Where are we going to get all that money from? Well, I forgot that God supernaturally provided the money for the building, the little building we were in. So theoretically, if he could provide for the little one, and I mean, it was supernatural. It wasn't spectacular. But it was, I mean, people were sending in money in the mailbox. So theoretically, if he could do it for the little one, maybe, maybe with a little bit of, take out a loan, you know, payday loan, maybe God could get the money some ways. Oh no, hallelujah. I'm sorry, I got happy. The gold is his, remember the scripture? Gold is his, silver is his, the cattle on a thousand, his. It's all his. Where he lives at, the city where he lives at, streets paved with, Gold, gold so pure you can see through it, not broke. Well, how are you going to get the money? Well, that's not the problem. The problem is our faith. What can we, what can we believe him for? What can we trust him? What are we willing to ask? What, we are, we, what are we willing to think about? God is talking about doing stuff now, growing the church now, and we locked out the building. Like, God, what are you talking about? So I'm thinking about expansion, growing the church, but we, we, I can't leave the house. God thinks he can do anything. Do you think that? Do you believe that? Is he able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think? Any limit, any measure you could set on. He can go beyond that so far, so far, so far, so far. The only limitation is his will. His will. Part of being God is you get to have the final choice. But the thing is, if, if you get into fellowship, into covenant relationship, then your will and his will are in sync. Jesus said, me and my father, we're one. Hallelujah. All right. Go back to Ephesians chapter one. Ephesians chapter one. I'm having fun. Praise God. Ephesians chapter one. So what is the power available to the believer? Let's go back to, um, let's see, just a little bit to add context. Ephesians chapter one. Verse 19 says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? Well, it's according to the working of his mighty power. Go down to verse 20, which he wrought in Christ or which he released in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. That kind of power is available to the believer. What kind of power is available to the believer? Well, it's the same measure of power that's available which he wrought or would he release when he raised Christ from the dead. So when God created the earth, no one was resisting him. When Jesus was raised from the dead, hell, the devil, all of them were resisting him. If you read Isaiah 53, it says to whom was the arm of the Lord revealed talking about when he raised up Jesus from the dead. He was, it wasn't a strain. It wasn't a struggle. He just, 
raised him up. But that power, that measure of power, you're trying to figure out how much power is available. That measure of power is available to the believer, to the man or the woman of God that will dare to know God intimately and personally and believe him because you know he's faithful. Then you have access by faith to that power that's on the inside of you, laying dormant, waiting to be released. God is desperately waiting. The only thing he's desperate for is waiting for somebody to actually believe him and act like his word is so. The coronavirus cannot stop the move of God. Hallelujah. In fact, God already knew what was going to happen before it happened. And he'll take what was meant to be evil and turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. Somebody wave your hands around. He'll turn it around. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ephesians 1 verse 20 says, what's the power available to the believer? It's the measure of power that he wrought when he raised Christ from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Now, this, this part is supposed to be, I'm going to major on this on, um, on Sunday when we do Resurrection Life Part 2. But just go over to chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. So what's the power available to the believer? Well, it's a measure of power which was released when he raised him or Christ Jesus from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Oh, is oh yes, oh hallelujah. Oh yes, he is risen. Oh, hallelujah. And that is good, man. That is right. That we celebrate his death, burial, and resurrection. But something happened to you, not just him. Let me go ahead and mute Brother Reggie. I think you're doing the dishes. All right. There we go. Something happened. Not to G, but something happened to you. What happened? All right. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Now, in Ephesians 1, verse 20 says that the power or the measure of power available to the believers is the same measure of power that was released when he raised Jesus up from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5 says, Are you ready for this? Are you, are you sure you're ready? All right, here I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Ephesians 2, 5 says, even when we were dead in sins, past tense, right? Even when we were dead in sins, he hath quickened us together or made us alive together with Jesus, with the anointed one. Made us alive together. What did Paul say in Galatians? Chapter 2, verse 20. I was crucified with Christ, yet I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. I was crucified. I was crucified. Is that, is that the way you, I died. I died. The wimp died. The loser died. The victim died. The sinner died. The bad guy died. The bad girl died. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm living a new life. I'm living his, his life is being lived and expressed through. Our lives are... He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. All right. Praise God. All right. Uh, Ephesians chapter two, verse five says, even when we were dead in sins, past tense, hath quickened us together and made us alive together with Christ, with the anointed one. By grace are you saved. By grace are you healed. By grace are you delivered. By grace are you preserved. That's what that word saved means. Verse six says, so he quickened us. He made us alive together with him. Oh, yes. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, hallelujah. Look at verse six now. And have raised up. Now, see, if you if you wrote this in the Bible with crayon, then it's wrong. But I got this Bible. It was already in there. Can you see? It's already in there. If this was your idea, it's wrong. But this is God's idea. God's idea is what he did for you and to you in Christ Jesus. All right. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. And have raised us up or raised Reg Reggie up or raised Liz up or raised Dr. Moss up together with him and made Reggie, made Liz, made Michelle. Who else is? made iPhone person on Zoom 
what did he do? And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Another translation says co-seated. I was looking for a new um, chair for my office. And they had like a big, um, like a two-person recliner. So you can you just see yourself. There's like this two-person throne. And there's Reggie sitting right next to him. Praise God. There's Michelle. There you are right there. Praise the Lord. There I am. Hallelujah. Co-seated. With him in heavenly places. What, what are we doing up there? We watch the television? We worrying about the virus? No. Go back to Ephesians chapter 1. What are you doing up there? So verse 20 says, what is the power available to the believers? It's, it's according to the power which he wrought or released in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. That's already happened. Whether or not you're living in the reality of that is something else. Hallelujah. All right. So where is he now and where are you now? Because it says you're seated together with him in heavenly places, right? That's what it says in Ephesians chapter 5 and 6, chapter 2, verses 5 and 6, right? So what are you, what's your position now? What's the time look like? What's your position now? It says you're far above all principality because he's far above all principality. Far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named not only in this world, but also that which is to come. Far above. I was talking to my wife, I think, today or yesterday, how the Bible doesn't say a lot or hardly anything about politics, but it talks a lot about authority. It talks a lot about authority. Hallelujah. Why do we waste our time with politics when we could be seated together with them and have places and governing and ruling and controlling with him according to the will of God, not according to your personal preferences. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. Far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also that which is to come. Verse 22 says, and have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. What is the church, brother pastor? Well, I'm glad you asked me. Look at verse 23. The church is his body, the fullness of him or the full measure of him that filleth all in all. Woo! Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 2, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22, Amplify says, and he has put all things under his feet and has appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church, a headship exercised throughout the church. Mm. Verse 23, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. For in that body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete and who fills everything everywhere with himself. In the body, in the church, is the full measure of him. It is not being expressed. I had this thought yesterday. Lord, why is the church weak? And thank God for correction. It's not that the church is weak. The church has no revelation about how strong it is. And so if you think weak and act weak, you're going to get what weak folk got or get. Even though you may not be actually weak. The church has no active. And I say when I say the church, I'm talking about all of us. I know you're wonderful, but the church in general has no active revelation to the, and we'll fight each other over it. The word says you have power and dominion. Oh, no, it doesn't. You're supposed to suffer for the man. All right. I'm going to say something. All right. Praise the Lord. We don't have a revelation of the power available to the believer. which is according to the power that was released when he raised Jesus from the dead. If the devil couldn't stop that, what, what, how do you think he'll stop you? 
and me and Reggie. Once we have the active revelation of who we really are. Let's go back to Galatians chapter two, verse 20. What our current state of being actually is. Talking to people who walk by faith and not by sight. Because you might look in the mirror, it don't look like this. You might look at your body, it don't feel like that. But what does the word say? Galatians chapter 2, look at verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ, or the anointed one, liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh. You're talking about now. I live by the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That power is available right now. You access the power by faith. Grace has made salvation available. We access the grace, the healing, the victory, the resurrection life. By faith, I believe, I believe. Paul, not, I don't know how to put it. Um, I don't believe in God. So what are you talking about? I don't believe in God. I know God's real. Because he's been over my house. I didn't, he didn't walk through the wall. Don't worry. He's made his presence known to me in a way that I can know it and understand it. And I can't communicate it, obviously, because I'm stumbling over my words right now. But I know God's real. I know God's real. He stepped out of eternity into time, into my house, into my bedroom. When I was jacked up and made himself real, introduced himself, came into my life because I let him in. I know he's real. I know the Bible is the word of God because I was sitting in the Detroit Public Library and I was thinking about these things and I, I'm a little baby Christian. And the word says it, you know, the Bible, you know, holy men of old wrote, wrote the scripture as they were inspired by God. Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Literally, God breathed. His life is in the word. When you approach it in faith, then that life is released when you approach God's word in faith. Hallelujah. And I heard from God. And he said what the word said. He'll he always say everything that he says to you about your everyday life will always be in the context of this book. Remember one time, I'm not going to go there. Anyway, he said, I wrote the Bible. So there's, there's two things. I know God's real. I know the Bible is him communicating to man in the earth. I know the writer of the, of the word, the Holy Spirit, because he lives on the inside of me. He helps give me understanding into this word. He'll help you. He'll even use, like, you know, me and, with my natural limitations to, commu to communicate the truth of the word. I'm sitting in a converted garage that was made into an office, a little house. We call it the mini house. With a, I'm looking at my little camera here with my little, my little stuff around, my little lights, Amazon lights. And through this thing we're doing, the Holy Spirit can be in between us and us both translating, speaking to your heart, highlighting points, making it, you know, even with my, you know, make it all make sense a little bit, kind of. And if you've been taking notes and if you look at it for yourself more than once, He'll talk to you about it more than once. And then you'll start to see. 
Then you'll start to understand. Then you'll start to put all the things together. Praise God. Praise God. This is not the end, folks. This is just the beginning. Here's my little mic. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming back real soon. Lord have mercy. We don't have time to waste. You, before, you know, 20 years ago, you could just waste time and lay in front of the TV and. Oh, man. We don't have time to waste. We got to make the, mom, the most of every opportunity. We're going to come out of this stronger. I'm speaking for myself. I'm speaking, you know, prophetically. At least for the people that's been attached to this ministry. We're going to come out of this stronger. We're going to come out on this with, with a momentum that we didn't have before. God's going to start adding to the church. And in this time where we have a lot of theoretical downtime, it's a good time to pray. Like, God, you know, can't leave the house. How about I talk to you? Read the word out loud to yourself. Read Ephesians chapter one. All the verses, read it out loud to yourself again and again and again. Pray with your spirit. Read it out some more. Pray with your spirit some more. Read it out loud to yourself. Man, that word will get into your heart. And when it gets into your heart, the Holy Ghost will start showing you things. Hallelujah. About the word, about your life, about things that come. Praise God. I said, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Um, all right. So this is the place where I, we, we usually beg for money, but I'm not begging. The, the best investment, the best investment you can make is in the kingdom of God, into the lives of other people. I humbly ask you to pray. Ask God, should you, should you give? And then just do what he tells you to do. If you pray and he gives you a figure that's more than what you have in your bank account, the word says in um, Second Corinthians that he gives seed to the sower. That that individual that desires to give, he will empower them. He will enable them. He will somehow, some way, get the resources that they need to be able to give. And at the same time, it says he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater or provide for their necessities. So you being able to have your needs met is directly connected to you sowing or giving out of the abundance that God gives you by faith. So if you don't want to give, please don't give. Well, pastor, I just feel sorry for you. You're wearing that same hat every, every week. I want you to get a new. No, please don't give. <laughs> I'm serious. Praise God. Don't give. But if you have a heart to give, if God's stirring you up right now, just do what God tells you to do. That's it. We just make it so, I don't know, so complicated when basically just do what God tells you to do. I mean, you might not be able to bench press 8,000 million pounds, but you can do what God tells you to do. I mean, you can. You may not want to, but you can if you wanted to. And if you ask him for help, Philippians talks about that, you know. He'll give you the capacity. He'll give you the ability both to will and to do his good, his good will, his good plan, his good purpose. But we got to keep it real. Like, God, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to read my Bible. But I want to want to help me. <laughs> I want to want to help me, Lord, both to will and to do your good pleasure. Help me, Lord. And he will help you. 
to want to and to do it. Because that power is on the inside of you right now. Hallelujah. Woo. Pastor um, Michelle Renee Monche, are you still available or did you fall out? What's going on? you gone on to glory. <laughs> You're not serious, right? You. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually speaking to you from heaven right now. It's great. Praise to hear God. You, you guys. sound good. All right. I'm enjoying it. I don't have any announcements. Uh, Make something up. Doing... We're all at home. Make something up. <laughs> it's like it really. It doesn't. We can't really no announce. No new announcement. We... So. Um, Tomorrow it... morning, six of prayer. Did you hear that? I heard. Eh, 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 eh. Can you do that again? Join us tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. for prayer. Mm -hmm. Is that through? Okay. And then a Friday night prayer with uh, Pastor Don Monch at 7 p.m. We're actually going to have some healing cloths. We're going to believe for the anointing to be hands on the healing cloths. And if you know somebody who needs one, be ready with their address and so forth so we can mail those out to them and they can have um receive their okay. in there so praise well, god now, that's I, all I, okay did i know about that sounds kind of sounds new all right. yes okay praise the lord all right so at 7 59 we're supposed to end by eight or people all right praise the lord all right everybody um, we, uh, you can watch this again, you know, just disregard my shenanigans and watch it again. Listen to what the spirit of God is saying to you. And we'll post this on, on, um, it's on Facebook live. We'll put it on our YouTube channel. We'll make it available so you can check it out. Pastor Michelle, who has her, um, she's a, I don't know if you know this, Pastor Michelle is a YouTube, um, influencer star. So. Amen. Praise the Lord. She has a, a Holy Ghost YouTube um, ministry. So, you know, she's going to be recording some new fresh messages this this week. The, check, so check out the word with Pastor Michelle. If you want to learn more about the ministry, go to our website, faithsf.church. Uh, you can give there, too. Or if, if you go to, um, I think, Church Online, you can look at the, the previous messages. You can listen to the podcast. You can do a lot of stuff, a lot of great stuff. So. Um, thank you to everybody who came out tonight. We will be back here um, Friday at 7 p.m. And um, yeah. Okay, everybody take their, their in the Zoom. Can y'all take yourself off the mic, off off the mute, and just say howdy and goodbye and stuff as we get ready to leave. You don't have to get on camera. Yeah, this is Brother Reggie. You don't have to get on camera, but if you just, Dr. Moss, take yourself off. and I can, I can hear somebody watching television while Pastor Don preaching. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> praise the Lord. All right. It was so great. Man, I just, praise the Lord. So wonderful to see everybody tonight, virtually, to be in God's presence together. We will be back. On Sunday, we'll do part two of living the resurrection life. And man, I'm believing God to really speak to us and impart the the reality of what God is, what what happened to Jesus and what happened to us and how we can live in the reality of that right now. So y'all be blessed. Y'all have a great night in Jesus name. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye, Liz.